Hello, everyone, and um, welcome to Cultural Exchanges and our discussion with our conversation with Matthew Bourne. Um, my name's Mel Knott. I'm a senior lecturer here at De Montfort University in dance. And um, Matthew Bourne, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Um, Great to be here. Sir OBE, choreographer of over 30 years for theatre, film and television. I think you have a number of honorary doctorates, one from us as well for the That's arts. Great. Very proud and, of that. Um, I believe a joint holder of the most Olivier Awards alongside Judy Dench. Well, Is actually, that... <laughs> I hate to correct you, but I'm the, the holder of the most now because I won another one. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. I, I won thought... more than Judy. Can you believe it? Yeah. Marvellous, wonderful. It's fantastic to have you back here virtually in Leicester, even though you can't be here in person. Um, and in our sort of anniversary, one of our anniversary years of Cultural Exchanges Festival, you've been before and yeah, there's been yeah. a conversation with you before. And I've got the pleasure today of, of having, leading, guiding another one with you. Um, everybody who's watching, we're going to talk together, Matthew and I, for hopefully about 25 minutes. And then we have some questions that have already come in and we would love you to put questions in the chat as we go along and then we can pick up on those. So the second half is really over to you, everybody in the audience. Um, so let's start. I called this longevity and learning. We've just had a little giggle backstage about that. Um, it's nothing to do with our age, but um, really to do with things that I have noticed, Matthew, over the time that I've been watching New Adventures. I, in fact, remember coming with one of my school groups in London at the time to see the very first performance of Swan Lake at Sadler's Wells. I remember we paid five pounds for our tickets um, as a school group. And I, <laughs> oh, I know, but I, I just, uh, and so that, that length of time, I still have a very strong, vivid memory of that. But um, New Adventures, um, previously Adventures in Motion Pictures, but New Adventures and, and you as a, as a choreographer, movement director, artist have been um, around, for a while now doing this marvellous work. Um, so I'm going to start with longevity um, and I'm going to move into learning and we're going to talk very much about the work on and off stage that you do with the company. So, but to start us off, um, it, it was a struggle to think how do we how do we think about this conversation because we know that we've perhaps heard Matthew talk lots of times about his work and we've seen it. So, um, Let's just, in a nutshell, Matthew, could you give us 30 years of an, an image of highlights for you, please? <laughs> well, you mean of the career, you know, yeah. the, the professional. So, yeah, so I've been choreographing professionally, I suppose, since the company started, which was straight from college in 87, so a, a bit longer than 30 years now. And, you know, if we're thinking about the longevity thing, it, I I thought well, why are we, why am I still here after this all this time you know and, and, and why is the company still here and there's a couple of things uh, I think I, I've always considered myself lucky to actually do work that um, is very audience conscious it's the sort of work I want to do I very much think of the audience when I'm making the work so I think that's one of the reasons why the company kind of took off in the first place so it was always um, very much I suppose an entertainer in some ways, and uh, and that doesn't mean it's not meant be, being easy and being um, too too easy to follow, and too there, there are always things to think about. There are always uh, issues involved in the pieces, and they're not dance theatre by its nature is not straightforward as a medium, you know. So, but I think that's been the key to the why the work is still around, you know, is is that mm. connection with audiences. Um, the other thing that I'm lucky to have been able to do, uh, and there's something that's very much part of my nature as well, is I love reinvention. I love reviving. I love most choreographers, directors will tell you it's all about new work. And I completely get that. And I understand why people are like that. And I have that feeling myself when I'm making a new piece. But I don't, again, I don't think we would be here in the position we're in as a company had I not really had this love of bringing pieces back and making them better and, and rethinking them and working with new dancers on them. And 
some choreographers get very attached to the original cast of something. If that was the case with me, then I would have stopped doing some of these pieces a long time ago. You know, so those sort of things do create an atmosphere in a world where you where you everything still feels fresh, you know, and I think that's important as well to sustain, you know, that kind of a career. Um, I think luck has a lot to do with it along the way, you know, of, of any kind of career. And I I remember the, the big success of Swan Lake, which of course was an um, unprecedented thing and not something we could have um, anticipated really. It was such an unusual thing for the dance world. I guess the, the, the problem following that, people are aware of that piece, I'm sure, um, was just following following it up. You know, it's mm. sort of, can you do another one? Can you, are you going to be a one hit wonder, you know, and, and finding other subject matter and other things to connect with audiences. And that's something that uh, a hurdle I'm glad I got over at one point in my career, you know, would it all be about Swan Lake forever? You know, yeah. sometimes it feels that way, it still is. Mm. But we have a lot of other pieces, you know, that um, people enjoy and people like now. Um, so that's it. That's an interesting aspect of it. Um, and I suppose my great love of, of company, I, I think I had this when I was very, very young, when I was a kid, I, I, when I used to put on little amateur shows from about the age of four or five onwards, I would always call it the something company in, in <laughs> company, or whatever it may be. I, I had one company called, called the Bornadium Theatre Group as sort of a mixing my name with Palladium, which I thought was the best theatre in, you know, London. <laughs> Um, but it was always the something company, and I love the idea of bring the idea of bringing people together to make something, and having that as an ongoing experience, an ongoingness with those people, a group of collaborators and a group of um, uh, dancers and performers to nurture. And I've always loved that so much, and I've rejected so many other things in my career along the way that would have taken me out of my company to do films or other sh stage shows and things, because I just love, I didn't want to lose that very precious thing, which is having a company. And I think that's something that's, that's made me uh, continue along this line. I still love it. And I still, um, that that's really where I want to be. You know, I'm absolutely love having a company of yeah. performers and artists, you know. Great. And that, I've got two things on that. That idea of company um, mm. takes me on really to the next thing I'd really like you to talk about in, in that sense of that long, that sort of long life and that long career is I've, I've noticed that um, if you if you're part of New Adventures, you stay with New Adventures. I mean, it seems very obvious to me that dancers who work with you stay with you for a long time as dancers, as artists or are nurtured and developed into other roles in the company, perhaps. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that in terms of the careers or the um, the time and the nurturing that you've talked about that you spend with people who are working with you in the company. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things to say on that, really. I mean, the first thing is, where else do you get the chance to perform as much as we perform? And as many people find that so exhilarating and exciting, and they do many, many performances of a piece. Sometimes dancers don't get that opportunity to, to work so long on a piece, you know. So that's a really exciting aspect of being in New Adventures. People know they're going to perform a lot, and they learn through the performance. So that's a, a learning experience in itself, actually, is you get thrown in at the deep end, and it, within two months you've done dozens of performances already you know so you you learn on the job so that's uh, people really want that and like like the idea of that um but the other thing you say is that people stick around i i think um for me it is a call of people who um a kind of need to be developed in the kind of style of the company and most of the shows have a mixture of more mature dancers in the roles that work for more older dancers and people who've been around for a while, and the new young talent, and that they will learn from each other. The young ones bring in a fresh energy, and they and then they also learn from the people who've been there for some time because the dancers um, also are not necessarily trained actors; they're trained dancers. Uh, acting is a big part of what we do, and a, that kind of performance. So. That's something they learn to do and they fall in love with it, actually. They fall in love with this style of performance and they want more of it and there's very little other places to get it in a way. Mm. So that's another reason. Um, 
the other thing you say about the the sense of um, continuing a career has become very important as as I've got older as well. I mean, when I started out with the company, it was much I was much closer to them in age, and I was I could much more of a friend in that sense of just being the same age as them. And even to begin with, I performed as well, so that's that was um, that was very uh, a different experience. But now, of course, they um, they need. Uh, as as dancers have, as as you know, have fairly short careers. Um, one of the things that became very important to me after a period of time, when I realised that some of them were not going to be able to tour so much and do this, was we started to do a lot of work uh, through our charity, which is used to be called Reborn, but is now just under the banner of New Adventures, um, and all the other work that we do. And I can and I've. Uh, managed to employ and nurture a lot of amazing teachers and community workers and people who come in, into the company who have been stars of the company really and dancers with the company for many years and now go out and teach or inspire or take classes or uh, lead projects and um, it's nice to be able to offer them the work for one thing but also for the young people involved sometimes these people are the people they've seen in the older videos and things that we have yeah. some of our shows you know they're getting to see meet see those people and um that's a really great thing i think the you know uh, anything we can do at the moment that it does extend a career like that and you're using the worth of people like that is so important to me um and it makes the company a much wider family of artists some of which are at the peak of their performance career, some of them at the beginning, and some of which are still pitching in there and helping with some of the productions, but also doing a lot of other amazing work uh, with us as well. So I, I think that's how the family has grown. Um, mm. And it's still, in many ways, quite a young company, actually. But So we're seeing the generations of when we started out still there, you know, still there working and, um, and bringing some people back, like Adam Cooper came back to do the Red Shoes recently from hadn't worked with him for over 20 years. Um, so we sort of, it's, um, it's certainly the way uh, I always imagined the company to be uh, yeah. best run is as a family. Yeah. yeah. I remembered um, Matthew doing a post-show discussion, I think with some of the dancers Mm. at Curve and I, I think it might have been Swan Lake two two years ago would that have been maybe did you yes. were you touring that and yeah. I remember talking to one of the dancers and forgive me I can't for, I can't remember exactly the name but it was the it was the young dancer who played the prince and mm. he had was was in that production for the first time and he talked in the post-show discussion about seeing the show as he was growing up knowing Swan Lake because I think he was maybe 20 or 21 and obviously Swan Lake was coming up for 25 years yeah. um, in in existence and I found that so resonant and I suppose that's what led me to think about these things in terms of what you're saying about the company and the family that this young man had this young dancer had grown up watching other people dance the very role that he was doing now and it yeah. had inspired him to do that how do you keep the works fresh <laughs> well it's i know who you were talking about so a young guy called james lovell who was kind of making his debut in in a, the role of the prince at a very young age one of the youngest principals we've ever had at 19 i think um and the amazing thing about that show well the <laughs> The thing that really struck me when we did we started to rehearse it two years ago was it was the first time we'd ever done that production. It comes back about every four or five years. Yeah. Um, where many, many people in the cast were not born when, when we made the piece, you know, were not alive yeah. when we made the piece. That was a bit of a shock for me. <laughs> um, so many of them had grown up with it. Uh, and I felt like a sort of piece of history walking amongst them. I was like a sort of historical person to them, you know, <laughs> which is really, again, really weird. But the incredible um, uh, power of their inspiration through their life of wanting to be in this piece, everyone in that piece, it was their dream to be in it, you know, a lifelong ambition to be in that piece. The men and the women. Um, mm -hmm. But particularly the young men, because they see that swan as a sort of image of something that they attain to 
in a way. And you can't buy that kind of devotion in a company. It's incredible to be mm. around those young people and to, to feel that devotion to the piece, you know, and they and therefore we could tour it for a long time and they still loved every second of it. Um, but you were asking a wider question, weren't you? How do you keep the, the pieces fresh? And I think that has a lot to do with it. The, the people want to be there. But for yeah. me, I feel you have to reinvent, as not always, but as much as you can, you have to reinvent the the works that come back and make them work for a new cast and that's how you keep them fresh you're inspired by the new talent and you, for me i get very inspired by the thought of that person in that role and oh i need to bring that show back because they're going to be amazing in that part and then rework it slightly for them make them feel mm. that they're part of it they have ownership of it and then we would we mm -hmm talk about the piece constantly sometimes we tour for a piece for many months you know even in beyond a year sometimes and uh we do notes every day we talk about the piece we have new ideas people are all shocked in when i do a q a at the end of the show to say we put a new bit in tonight did any you know did anyone notice we actually put two new ideas in today you know and, and that's that keeps everyone on their toes and everyone mm. engaged within the company it's so important because the audience needs to feel that this is a, a fresh experience each time they come and uh, and that's what I believe we give. You know, I think it's, we've become very good at that over the years of giving people a show that looks like we've, we've only just started doing it. Yeah. I remember talking to one of your dancers backstage at Curve who said, oh, and he was telling me about notes because some of the young dancers, we'll talk about this particular project in a moment, so I'm not going to reveal what it was, but some of the young dancers were saying, I've never been in a show where you get so many notes. And, and one of the older dancers said, well, I was in this particular production and we got notes on the night the penultimate show you know we had notes to change it so I think it's really interesting that you say that yeah. that the dancers themselves as well keep their performances alive and yes. fresh and some of the technical staff who come and join us uh, and have not worked with us before can't believe how much we rehearse you know they think <laughs> we're coming to a show that's up and running it's gonna just gonna turn up at 6 30 mm. you know the show it, it, we rehearse all the time. We're always one of the other things we we do within a long tour is we we give more opportunities for more castings. So we we recognise the talent and we give them an opportunity to do a featured role or a leading role, and that's all worked into the scenario as well. So that, and that keeps it fresh for uh, other performers as well. You've got the um, new people to play off. So there's there's always something going on. There's always rehearsal going on in that way. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned talent earlier in, in as you were talking about, you know, noticing new talent and bringing yeah. new talent. And um, I'd like to sort of take that a little bit and move us into some of the learning. Um, obviously, the learning we're, we're hearing about all the time. I mean, uh, of dancers in your company, the, the, the sort of rotation of people that come in. So you're constantly learning, I would imagine, as a dancer, you're going into a choreographer. Um, but we, as we were chatting earlier, you were talking very much about talent development for you and nurturing dancers, choreographers of the future. Um, yeah. I noticed during lockdown some films of young choreographers, I think, who had been supported by New Adventures. So I, um, so I wondered if you could maybe talk about what, what's been going on there in terms yeah. of the choreographer's work. Well, thinking back, the whole thing of um, I, I was thinking about this because of the subjects we were going to be talking about. And I, I realized that this all sort of kicked off m much more strongly for me about uh, about 11 years ago, um, 10 years ago, when I was, uh, had my 50th birthday. And, you know, you've been around for a while. You kind of want to you kind of enjoy giving back a little bit. You enjoy the nurturing of, of new talent. Um, it, it became something I was very interested in and really enjoyed doing, not just dancers, but young choreographers would come to me for advice and things. And I got the, uh, the chance to sort of formalize that in a way. But one of the, the, the present that everyone gave me, all my colleagues and, and people in the industry, was uh, they created a fund to, to uh, launch this uh, choreographer award. Hmm. The New Adventures Choreographer Award, called the Knackers, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that was such a wonderful um, present to get because I think people knew me and they knew that that was a sort of passion, really. Um, so we started off that um, uh, 
kind of by every other year we did it, uh, mm. discovered some young choreographers. And the chart, the idea was to, that we would give them the opportunity to create work mm. and perform it for the industry. And we would invite a lot of people from the industry and they would get the chance to make maybe uh, bigger work or cast more people in it, things they wouldn't normally be able to do when you're starting out as a choreographer. And the first winner was James Cousins. And then we had John Ross and we had Caroline Finn and Jamil Berkma. Um, and so we've, that was, I loved doing that. And I loved, uh, I loved sort of following their careers since uh, that has happened. But um, it's, we found after a while, there was, it was, there were other ways we could do it as well. Uh, there are other ways we, that we could nurture uh, not just choreographers, but uh, young dancers as well, and um, and we've always been looking for new ways of 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 using that fund. I'm not sure the fund even exists anymore, to be honest. It's probably got used up very early on, but okay. we we follow on the, in the spirit of it, you know. Yeah. Um, and this film series recently was one of those things um, in that we uh, commissioned three young female choreographers, which we thought was a, a good. Thing to do at the moment to make a dance film during this time you know when they, we couldn't uh, do live work and uh, they all snapped the opportunity you know jumped to the opportunity to do that and I sort of nurtured them a little bit work, worked with them but really it was their it was it was their films I just sort of threw my oar in a little bit here and there to, mm. to um, ask the right questions but I, d I don't believe in you know, dictating in that way, but they did their own films. So that was something that we, that we, it was a sort of continuation of the NACA award. Um, but the other sort of thing I think you want to talk about, which is the, uh, we've done a couple of productions that have um, uh, done a similar thing, but with young dancers. Um, yeah. So should we talk about those? Cause you know, yeah, I want to talk yeah, about yeah. <laughs> and I've got my little link today. So I know Matthew's letting me do that link, that it is World Book Day today. Um, and also the week of the 10th anniversary of your production based on William Golding's Lord of the Flies. So I wanted to bring that up. We felt it was very resonant to talk about that today. So um, I wonder if you could sort of talk about that project initially. That was, was quite a different project, I think, at that time for the company to, yeah. to do. Um, and its legacy, because I know there was a long legacy with those young boys who took part in that. Um, yeah. And then perhaps move in, if you want to, to Romeo and Juliet from that as, as yeah. to how it was similar or different. Yeah, sure. Well, as you say, Lord of the Flies was a, a, a really different new kind of project for us. It was very much driven by um, the idea of nurturing and finding young men and boys who were interested in theatre, not necessarily dance, but d dance and theatre, um, and creating a project that would uh, initially, certainly when we created the piece in Glasgow, for, uh, young men from uh, backgrounds that were not, the, not wouldn't have a normal pathway into theatre. Some of them had never been inside a theatre, for example. Mm. So we, we really create, had to search around and, and a create um, a cast and projects that went with it. Sorry, my dog is barking here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, let me just get rid of him. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> so for people who, who aren't aware, Lord of the Flies premiered actually on the 2nd of March, 10 years ago today, 2011. I did a little bit of research, obviously, before I... Um, <laughs> came up but I noticed that you were doing what led me to it is because I saw that you're doing an intensive online project at the weekend with boys learning oh, projects and that's when I went oh it's the anniversary so yeah. continue anyway so boys um who didn't have a pathway no problem to um the theatre um the search for all these young boys and it began in 2011 didn't it the first production of yeah it. 2011 it was just a it was actually commissioned by a, a, a scottish arts council or scottish creative arts i think they were called um so it was a one-off thing with with one young cast and it was a it was very much about them we had very few uh, professional dancers in the project but most of the of the story uh, was told by the entire company of young men and boys, you know, and that was the whole idea of it. It was in looking for a subject where you could tell a story, which is all about young men. And so Lord of the Flies was the first idea that came into my head. And I created it along with my 
um, my late partner uh, in New Adventures, Scott Ambler, who was uh, created most of the choreography and co-directed it with me. But um, it, it was so successful, that initial uh, uh, production, the potential of it, we, we didn't realise how life-changing it was going to be for those young men who were involved and how emotionally involved they got by the end of it and how they found a uh, deep um, resonance in the piece and also uh, real strong bonds that were formed. Um, and we, we picked people from my company who, who were uh, very uh, nurturing souls, I suppose, as well, you know, mm. and people who would, they, obviously we're gonna, that was part of the job. It's not just to be in the piece, but also to um, work with the young people and, and to listen to them. And that's why something where we did note sessions that, they, that, that um, it was, some for some of them, I remember them saying that they couldn't believe they were being asked what they thought of something, you know, and, and being able to speak to the group, you know, and actually say what they felt, and that was an important thing, aspect of it. But we we took it on about three or four years later and did it around the country, and we did several productions of it, about thir thirteen, I think, different productions with different sets of boys, and uh, the legacy has been incredible. Uh, many of those young uh, guys have gone into uh, careers in the arts, uh, in dance and theatre. I mean, some people, some of them fell in love with dancing, and and some of them were already a little bit on the path there, you know. But n many of them were not. And um, mm. but I always say, even the ones who didn't go into theatre or the arts in any way, they they got an amazing uh, experience from it of working together and teamwork and. Um, and made some great friendships, you know. And I think I thought it was it, it was a very different atmosphere when you bring a, a group of young people together, like or young men. And I guess this was the push about ten years ago was really getting young young men interested in dance. It mm. seems less so now, you know. I think that maybe the not that the job's totally done, but it's it, it doesn't seem to be such an issue now. It seems to be other things. But at that time, it seemed a very valuable thing to do, and the legacy of it for people who've come into my company since. I mean, some of them ended up in Swan Lake, you know. Mm. But, but one of the things we realised we had to do, along with productions like that, where it's a sort of a short burst, you know, of, of um, activity and a short burst of inspiration, you have to be able to follow it up. So there was lots of legacy projects attached to it. But what we started with a company that's been an ongoing thing is a thing called Swan School. And now we also have Signet School, where we it's a sort of training program for young people to get to the point where we feel they are at a level where they can audition for Swan Lake or one of our other shows. And we give specialist sort of uh, training. Uh, and it's become a really brilliant thing for us now in, in, in more recent times to uh, look for more diversity in our, in our young dancers, you know, and to be able to find that talent at a younger age and that's become a very important issue for us as well so swan school signet school for men and women not not it's yeah. all the boys now yeah. and of course the production the other production you mentioned romeo and juliet which romeo is one juliet. was a sort of direct follow-on from um lord of the flies but i felt this time we had obviously had to make it for young men and women not not just men um and we went for a slightly different stance on this one. We went more for um, a talent search rather than um, uh, a more raw talent, if you know what I mean. So we, mm. we we thought the inspiration for it was to cast it young. And we brought in a lot of um, local young talent that auditioned for it. And we uh, found a, some fantastic young dancers, the beginnings of their careers. Some of them were pre-training or about to start and we the amazing thing about both productions is we've managed to keep in contact with so many of them and invite them to new projects that we're doing and new initiatives and new workshops and things so we we're keeping our eye on an enormous amount of young dancers around the country actually mm. um uh that we hope to work with again in the future um but the before we go on <laughs> the what? the thing about um Romeo and Juliet, which was different, was that we decided to widen the the, uh, 
the field of people we were working with, young people, to other areas of the production. So not just the dancers, but I had a young associate choreographer called Ariel Smith, who's who's doing extremely well now. She's just made a piece for English National Ballet, and she was a wonderful colleague on that piece for me. Um, and also a designer, conductor, arranger, lighting designer, all had young associates working on the production. So it's about sort of finding uh, young talent in other areas of production as well, which was great and wonderful and um, very proud of that production actually, because it was about listening to young people as well as they were part of the yeah. team. And I think it reflects that, you know, when you see it. Yeah, I, I think it does. I, I think one of the things, I mean, I was, lucky enough to to follow the Leicester cast because we opened the show in Leicester didn't we at Curve and spoke to some of the young dancers and I what really resonated with some of their comments was how they felt um empowered and I remember one of their comments they said well we we created some work in the studio and that is in the show that will always be in the show and they were amazed by that I think that there is perhaps a vision because the work that people see on stage is so slick so beautifully re rehearsed and produced that actually you maybe go in and bang the whip and tell your dancers what to do but what I sense and I think what you're going to talk about hopefully is is the collaboration with these young people with your dancers with your co-directors is very important to you yeah, very much. And I, I, this piece in particular was about that. So there were elements within each production because we went around the country after Leicester and we had a group of young dancers come and join us each place we went to. And they'd been rehearsing on, a, on a, another version of the set uh, the week before. We had two whole companies that toured alternating so that they could rehearse as well. And there were elements within it where they could create their own sections and sections of the piece. Some of it was taught. Obviously, you can't do a whole show in a week, you know, but um, but basically I feel they felt it was nice to hear what you said, because I think they felt that kind of ownership, which I love, where they feel this is my bit. I, I did this. You know, this is I created this. And that's so important, I think, to feel part of something and not just have it handed to you on a plate, you know. Um, and. The other thing about that show, which was interesting, it was we, even the professional company were very young as well. They were mostly recent graduates and the leading roles of Romeo and Juliet and other uh, some of the other leading roles were danced by the younger members of my own company uh, get, getting their first opportunity to create a big role and a big mm. or a featured part. So the whole, as, the whole production was about um, taking people to the next level. And I think the young people that you probably spoke to soon realized that they were in at the deep end with this production it wasn't token involvement they were in it from beginning to end and the set is very white very in your face you can't hide anywhere on it you're in it you know and you're visible the whole time so it's sort of a i, I felt it was quite um brave of them actually in many ways uh, mm. to uh really throw themselves into it. And some had problems with that. You know, it was a scary thing. You know, we had to sort of get the, the company also had to look after each other, you know, and some of the subject matter was quite scary and quite um, uh, uncomfortable. And sometimes the young people involved were, were affected by that, you know, and we had to acknowledge that and deal with that. And um, that was all part of it, you know, part of the yeah. whole experience. But yeah, I mean, in that, that sense of belonging, um, I could really feel that very tangibly from having the opportunity to just be around that happening on its first iteration in Leicester. Yeah. So I think that they that, that was very obvious, all the things that you've said. Um, any plans to do anything like that again? I mean, it strikes me as something that's very, very resource heavy, you know, in terms of having to work with lots of communities. I mean, it's amazing for us as the communities who benefit from it, but for the company? It's really, really, it's only something you can do every few years because it takes a lot of, a big toll on the team. Organisationally, it's, it's enormous. It was quite hard creating a show where a chunk of the cast members were not there all the time. Mm -hmm. 
in a, in a revival, you can sort of deal with that, you know, but when you're trying to create something, you have to sort of imagine people there. That was really tough. Um, so it had its, it had its ups and downs, you know, it, it really did, but it, the benefits outweigh the downsides uh, uh, by a lot really in the end. And it, it, what it actually gives to people. I do worry sometimes so that they've, we have got very good at, at creating this family atmosphere and welcoming people into the company. And it's to the point where it's quite hard then to leave them, you know, to go yeah. on to another group or to, um, and they feel very connected to the company uh, in an ongoing way. And that's great. Um, and I wish I had the chance to employ all, many or more of them than I do, you know, but it's, it, you know, you've got that, um, I think whatever happens, you've given a lot of them a really good basis on which to build a career and to decide whether it's something they really love, you know, because it's hard work as well as the other thing we will say. It's yeah. not it's not easy. And uh, you, this may help you decide whether it's for you or not, you know, whether it's the life in, in this kind of world is, is, is right for you. And that's, that's yeah. important as well. Um, it could, be that, it could be a turning point in a different direction, if you know what I mean. You know, but yeah, that's absolutely. Well. good. Yeah, and I and I think you're right. Yeah, they 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 feel like they belong and perhaps want to keep coming back. I guess we should go to some questions. I mean, I I'd, I'd like to sort of finish up this bit. Um, I mean, it's it's great sort of chatting through. I could talk for hours on on the community work, and but I can see some questions coming in as well. But um, I mean, those were very two flagship learning projects. I mean, yeah. the work that goes on from your learning team, as it were, is ongoing and constant. I noticed um, some wonderful classroom films called Dance Venturers. Audience, if you haven't seen them, do check those out on New Adventures YouTube channel. You know, work that was made in lockdown by your associate artists who work in the learning team. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of other stuff that goes on, Matthew. So many. Isn't there? Dance Ventures is for very, uh, mostly for young people um, and families, you know, so it's fun. Um, but there are all sorts of other things and on and, and different, um, there's, there's a, as you said, there's a sort of boys initiative coming up around Lord of the Flies and that, that material that's been worked on this week. But there's also things like Overture, which is another thing that we do, which is about mm -hmm. community artists in dance. You know, that's been, it's one of the sort of un, un heralded things that we do that, um but i think it's been so successful in taking different uh dance artists out into the community around the country and we have a training program for them as well there are lots of things uh, dealing with uh, people with dementia was a project that we got involved with some time ago which was very special um all different levels of the community different types of groups uh we we do projects with and i i, I can only say how brilliant all my team are that do them. I obviously don't do everything by any means, and they're an incredible team now uh, who really care about what they do. Um, and that I'm so proud to be the figurehead of that, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, audience, that people watching, if you, if you don't know about that work, do sort of have a look around New Adventures website and what's going on because there's a tremendous amount. We see the big spectacles on stage, most people, but there, there's a lot that goes on. I'm going to start with some questions that came in ahead on the social media channels because we, we ought to do those first of all. Um, and um, the first one, if I go to my list, excuse me turning around, what would you say was or is the most inspirational moment in your career? <laughs> well, it's quite a difficult one, isn't it? Because you, you're inspired by things, you know, that make you want to do what you do. But an inspirational moment, um, I, I don't know whether it's a moment, but I feel that um, I, I touched on it earlier a bit, but I think that thing of feeling that I could, that I, could follow up on Swan Lake, which had been such an un unheard of success. And I felt that I I really struggled with a second piece that followed it, Cinderella. And we worked, we've worked worked on it over the years in many ways and to, to um, get it to be the show it is now. But um, just that acceptance, I think that inspired me. I think it's, it, I was inspired by the fact that audiences still wanted to come to our work. And I, I do get very inspired by the... Uh, 
when people are interested in what we do. I, I find that drives me on. Mm. And I do also get very inspired on a regular basis by new young talent that comes into the company. That makes me get up in the morning, is the interest in the, their talent and what that can do. That, that for me, probably is the single most uh, important thing for me now is the is the 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 talent within the company and what what I can see where I can see them going. I yeah, think that's, that inspires me still a lot. Fantastic. Um, what has been your favourite collaboration and why? Why? Sorry. Why? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I've got one main collaborator that I've worked with the whole time, and that's Les Brotherston, who's the uh, my designer. I've only done one show for New Adventures without Les, and that's Nutcracker with, with the great Anthony Ward. But um, Les is my closest collaborator, and I would have to say that's my that's my favourite collaboration in a way, because I, it, because it, I keep coming back to him, you know, and it, we have a sort of shorthand and we have a, a similarity of uh, uh, the sort of things we like. Um, so that's really important to me. But I suppose um, a collaboration of, in terms of uh, 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 artists would be, you know, bringing someone into the company who uh, inspired, who had inspired me. And I think probably getting Adam Cooper to do Swan Lake was a collaboration which really did affect me quite strongly because I, I felt I was bringing in a creature from another world at that point. He was yeah. in the Royal Ballet and we were like quite a sort of not not anywhere near technically as good as we are now, you know, as a company. And we were sort of uh, very different in a way. But he kind of came in as this thoroughbred thing into our mm -hmm. company, <laughs> but also <laughs> brought seriousness with him. We were very much known as a company that were fun and that did uh, had a wit about what they did and, and lots of um, uh, uh, pieces that were very entertaining in a way. But from Swan Lake onwards, I feel the thing I started to love doing more was was moving people and making people cry and, you know, telling those sort of stories. And Adam was the genesis for that, really. He came in with a seriousness and a, and, a, and wanted it, this piece. It, it, it was such a big thing for him to, to play the swan coming from a ballet company. He didn't want it to be silly or to be a send up or to be, you know, so he really pushed it in a direction of, of seriousness. And, and that, I think, affected what we did in the future so i always thank him for that um so that was a great collaboration mm, thank too. you i like the description of him as a thoroughbred i think that yeah. feels really really um yeah useful description <laughs> um okay let's um i'm going to there is a question about the challenges to the industry in covid but i'm going to skip to that because we're going to, i'm going to pick up on that later if i may mm. let's talk let's talk about the world as it was before first of all um so there's a question here as, a, as an inspirational male leader we've talked a, a fair amount about some um male led projects or boy led projects as well but as an inspirational male leader working within the dance world Please, could you comment on whether you believe there has been equal opportunity for women to pursue such influential or senior roles? Or I guess, what are you doing as well? Or how yeah. do you see it in your own context? Well, it's also sort of so historic, isn't it, as well? If I think back in the history of dance, I think there was a time, there has been times where the opportunity wasn't equal for men and women and and that's just across the board in many professions ludicrously and um and and dance world suffer from that as well i think to a certain extent but dance history has a lot of great women at the helm of companies and a lot of great female choreographers but i think it sort of dipped at some point and now i feel we're in a new age of certainly the encouragement of female choreographers but also having some great female choreographers out there doing doing work and great work and i think we've we the, the tide has turned i think mm. to a, a lot in recent times and i think the thing about the project as i said earlier about the the there was a, a feeling many years ago about getting young men involved in dance seemed to be a big thing because they, you every audition you advertised uh, for dancers you would get three quarters of the uh, applications were female and the and uh, the rest were male and in recent times it's become much more equal 
Mm. So that 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 feels it's been taken care of to a certain extent. And the next real thrust has been female uh, choreographers and female led companies. And I feel it, it's the support is there now. I really I really do. Maybe not enough, and it's it's ongoing. And I feel one of the things that we did, as you said, was to create these three films and, and ask three young female choreographers to to create these works. Um, and that's something that I can do as a as a choreographer led company. And no one, you know, not no one's gonna else is gonna come in and run this company because it's my company in a way, you know. Mm -hmm. So I can't we can't suddenly appoint a female artistic director because we're not that kind of company. We're a choreographer led company. But my associate uh, director is Etta Murphy. Um, who's been my partner by my side th throughout all of these years. You know, she just celebrated 30 years with the company. And many people will tell you she is the queen of new adventures. You know, she really is. <laughs> she is a leader for, for sure. So um, I, uh, I, I, I don't feel... Um, and our executive director, Imogen Kitchen, also is, is female, of course. And so it's sort of, it's, it, it feels the balance is there much more now some great choreographers mm -hmm. like crystal pipe kathy marsden you know people like that are doing works for the big companies around the world and they're very much in demand you know and there are others on the way uh, so that that feels great it's important the work is great as well and these these women are great you know they do great work which is brilliant yeah, absolutely. And I think what's interesting in response to that question as well is what you said about, you know, Imogen being your executive director. There are women in leadership roles in large companies such as yours. Um, they're just perhaps not yeah. as visible, maybe, as as you are. That's right. I think it's, sometimes it is. It's like Birmingham Royal Ballet is run by Carlos Acosta, but but their exec director is Caroline Miller and she's brilliant, you know, and she really has, has the brains of that company and really it, the team of those two is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and they, in many ways now the executive and the artistic director are, are kind of the equal leaders of companies. If you can get the mix right as they have, it's great. Yeah. Fabulous. Okay, so question about did um, about the work, about your work. Did the notion of twisting yeah. cl classical ballet twisting come from the love of the original productions or an appreciation that you needed they needed to be modernized for a developing audience uh definitely from love um definitely love of the music love of the original pieces uh, originally certainly i kind of sport it for myself a little bit here and there with some of some of the shows when i go back and see the original i go like oh what are you doing you know why don't you do more you know because i feel as I've, I've gone through a process of rethinking it um, but they definitely came from love, but also recognition that there is an audience out there that finds classical ballet, for example, quite alienating. And it's not something they're ever going to really connect with. And I felt that I was bringing this music to new audiences. You know, many people, would, uh, you think, would know the score to Swan Lake or Sleeping Beauty. But many people who came were going, like, what is this incredible music? I've you know, not heard this before. And you think, well, why would they have done in, you know, necessarily in the context mm -hmm. of seeing a piece done to it? So I, I always felt these things exist, coexist very happily. I still, I'm not anti ballet or classical uh, ballet. I still enjoy those things very much. Um, but I think our, what I try and give is a viable sort of alternative interpretation, usually of the music. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, I think there's room and there are room for others. You know, I do think there's room for others and other thoughts and other ways forwards with these uh, pieces. But I, I think there's room for everything. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to I'm going to skip over. I'm just sort of saying this for our tech team so they can put them up. Someone's asked a question about Capalia because that's their favourite ballet. Oh, yeah. um, and would you ever consider modernising that? Yes. <laughs> the dance styles of the dolls would be an amazing with a modern twist. So that's Isabella. Thank you, Isabella, for that. What do you think, Matthew? Well, it's been on a list for a while of pieces. You know, obviously, I've done a lot of the famous ballets. There's very few that I haven't done now. Um, so the list has got smaller and smaller. But Capade is still there. Uh, I have got a sort of an idea for it, um, a vague idea sort of around horror movies and um, waxworks and things like that, uh, something a bit creepy. I've never really done a <laughs> scary, creepy ballet. And I think that would be interesting, you know, to do. Yeah. So, so there you go, Isabella. Watch out for that. 
<laughs> so a question, this is um, one of our students I can see here, who's a community dance student. Um, and I think you, you've touched on your Overtures programme, so I think you're probably going to talk about this, but she, she said, could you expand on how someone like her as a graduate interested in the community dance sector might become involved with a company like yours who she's followed for many years? Well, absolutely. I mean, that is the that is the answer, really. It's the Overture uh, programme is it, get involved with that. Contact us and see when the next one starts, you know, because it's... I know people involved in it have gained so much from it. And it can feel very lonely being a, a dance animator or a, a, in a community if you've not got people to share it with. The coming together of, of, of similarly minded people, every so often, actually, you, you can have a sort of reboot session as well, you know, where mm. you come together and share your ideas. There's nothing like that. And you can feel very lonely. A lot of teachers say this to us in schools, mm. you know, a lot of te teachers who teach dance in schools and drama and stuff and um it can feel lonely and they love sharing and so that's what it's about as well and about giving um options and and um possibilities of how you might uh lead workshops and give new ideas i think it's just so important that uh you can uh, share really and have those contacts that are ongoing so around the country they the connections are there to um and not just when we bring everyone together but they they continue um, into people's lives and, and the friendships uh, are developed. So I think it's, if you're interested in that, um, then really this is the perfect uh, programme for you. Yeah, and it's and it's definitely for people starting out, I think, Matthew, isn't it, in the first yeah. five years of their community dance career? Absolutely. It's, it's developing yourself. Yeah, it, it's about development, absolutely. Not for old hands like me, although I'd love to do it. I don't know. I think we have had some old. I think we. I think we probably need to do that, don't we? A refresher. refresher. <laughs> no, just being selfish. Um, okay. So, question here from Ken: What personality traits or qualities are common across the best dancers that you've worked with? Um, well, the yeah. Um, what I like to have, find is, is an inquiring mind, you know, and and uh, because I like my dancers to uh, to do research and. Uh, look into their characters beyond what just the physicality of what they're doing, you know. So I find that that's important. Um, it's it. There are all the classic things about dancers being, you know, being very dedicated to what they do, and there is a sort of discipline that's always talked about. The discipline has to be there, really, to to do um, great work. Um, but I think for me, all those things I take as, as read, that those things are there, the things the dancer needs to be. What I look for is individuality, a mind that questions and will, will uh, be creative in the, in the creation of a piece, you know, not just stand there and wait to be told what to do, which unfortunately mm. what a lot of dance has been in the past. You know, when you work with a choreographer, you, you wait and, and just mm. do what you're told. And that's not brilliant i don't think ultimately that thing i was saying about ownership and feeling part of the creation of something so i would say uh, versatility is another thing really important these days and that actually widens your opportunities for castability as i call it in different roles and different kinds of shows um those things become very important as well i think thank you okay i'm gonna i've got one more here and then I'll go to the COVID related question. So lovely question here. Any advice for older people on setting up a performance company? Maybe this is your next community project, Matthew. Well, we have done some online projects for older people, actually. We did one around my piece, Play Without Words, that was on that is available on our website online. And um, you know, uh we have there's a there's a great older people's um company at Sadler's World's called the Company of Elders you know it's been going yeah. for many years and this we, we've done projects with them before um yeah it's something that's ongoing for us and we we, we like to engage with uh with not necessarily performers some people are did perform at one point in their lives and now they don't of, of course they've moved their lives have gone elsewhere but they they still want that outlet you know that creative outlet most of our projects are create uh, creatively based i guess mm. in, in that sense so I, I there's there's always new ones coming up with us new new um new 
uh, projects. So look out for those. But a dance company, uh, yeah, I like the idea. It would be good, wouldn't it? Actually, if you have a really great prof professional older dancer company, I'd, I'd be up yeah. for that. Not to be in yeah. it, but to work, to create for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll audition. I'll audition. The days are over. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's let's go to this one last one before we finish up, which is um, about the future and and obviously the place we've been in in the last year um, in the arts and theatre industry, and um, after the challenges, what what do, what do you see the future holding, Matthew? I mean, talk about that from the context of your own work, your company, or generally. Yeah, it's it's it, I can't be have any certainty on this really you know obviously we we we're, we're hoping that we're on a path now to the return to live performance and a recovery from this situation and and we're all keeping very positive about that but also we know well enough to know that there may be other hurdles along the way but i think it feels good at the moment um i suppose the the um the challenges will be getting people uh happy to come to a theatre again and sit quite closely together. And I don't think we realise how uh, programmed in a way we've become to being a, a distant from people without even mm. realising it, you know, and then suddenly finding ourselves in a close, in close proximity might feel odd for a while. So we should be ready for that with our audiences, you know, that they, but having said that, I do feel uh, that from what I can gather, people are desperate to get back to see live work. You know, and, and I think um, many people will do anything to to do that. And we may have to sit there in masks. We may have to do other things to get into the theatre. We may have to have passports, co uh, vaccine passports, all those things. Um, but the one thing that I, th the one overriding thing I think for me is is how audiences will feel and how performers will feel. Is we'll just be we're so much more grateful for what we do. Mm. Uh, and the experience that we miss um i don't think anyone will ever moan again about anything <laughs> it was so yeah. we're so yeah, we'll be so grateful to be doing what we do and what we love and people will be so grateful to be able to see what they love seeing and be part of that um that community of people uh that that is what stage work is about the the, the performers and the audience for me, that has been a really important aspect of my company, the warmth that we can try and create between um, with our audiences is is something that's maybe not often talked about. But I, it, for example, our curtain call, I think we do the best curtain calls in, in the world, to be honest. We're, <laughs> if anyone's not smiling on stage in those curtain calls and looking like they're pleased people came, they get a word afterwards. It's <laughs> very much about that that togetherness I, and I miss that so much it's those curtain calls when the audience gives back and it's a love it's such a lovely feeling you know and I think that's the thing or we'll miss uh, that I miss at the moment the most yeah I remember the Romeo and Juliet one to bad romance oh yes yeah Lady Gaga. fantastic <laughs> I, I tend to agree okay we're, we're coming to the end I'm going to sneak in three really quick 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 questions one word is, oh. um, we've talked about the pandemic and the things that have um, come from that, but one positive you'll take from the last year of the pandemic, what's been a positive element for you? Oh, for me, for me personally, a rest yeah. <laughs> and reading a lot, which I never have time for. Um, this is a personal one. Will you please bring back Dorian Gray? <laughs> well, it's not a one-word answer, but Dorian Gray, I love Dorian Gray, but it, it was set in 90, uh, 2008, and there's nothing more dated than the recent history. So it would need very much update because it was set during the present day. That's yeah. why it's a little problematic, but we're gonna, we'll have a go one day. Yes. I'll see that. And um, your I know we've got lots of dance students, people about to graduate from their courses in the next three months. Um, one top tip for them as they go out into the sector oh I, f I feel for them at the moment and they've all been amazing you know i've, I've, I've spoken to lots of students in, in in these in these months and i think they've been incredible the way they've taken everything on board and and 
I don't know. I th- I feel you've got to remain positive and things will come back. And I want to see it. I want to see the talent that I'm, I may have missed this year. You know, I, we want to make opportunities for young people to come and audition for us and to uh, to be seen. I think it's so important. Um, but positivity has got to be the thing. Um, and know who you are and know you have something to offer. You know, know that you that, that and that you will be wanted again soon. Um, it may feel a way off and, and an unusual way into the profession at the moment, but it will all come back and we want to see you and we want to learn from you and you want to see what you have uh, to offer. I think that's Marvellous. Thank you, Matthew, so much for joining us today. Um, and I hope we see you back in Leicester in Curve soon with the company. And will you come and visit us at DMU when you come back? I will. I think we're coming quite soon, actually, to Leicester. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And thank you, audience, for joining us. There's one more day of cultural exchanges left. So please hook into any of the other talks that you can. Bye, everybody. Everyone. Bye bye.